Hey everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel Savvy Forensics. So in the previous video, we have looked about various types of bloodstain patterns that could be encountered at the scene of crime. In this video, which is the third part of these, this video series, we'll be learning about the chemical enhancement and documentation of blood stains. So uh, we'll take it into parts. Firstly, we'll understand the chemical enhancement procedures and then the documentation of the blood stains. So let's begin. So the chemical enhancement of blood stain evidence. Now, what do you mean by the term chemical enhancement? So the chemical enhancement is usually done on the blood stain evidence when they are in the latent condition. What we are doing here is we are chemically enhancing. Why we have to do the enhancement? Because these stains are not visible to the naked eye. They need to be enhanced uh, using certain chemicals through which to make it visible and then for further examination and investigation, further analysis. So chemical enhancement procedures now we know that uh, there are um, many preliminary examinations of blood evidence like the colorimetric assays, further the chemiluminescence and the fluorescence assays. So the colorimetric assays, uh, they are usually used when the blood, we have to identify the blood, particular stain that is visible that it is blood or not. Now the chemiluminescence and fluorescence assays are usually used for chemical enhancement. Um, basically we use luminol and fluorescein. Now, firstly, we have to uh, know the differentiation between chemiluminescence and fluorescence assays. What is chemiluminescence? So, this term can be divided into two parts, chemi and luminescence. Luminescence means light, while chemi means chemical. So, uh, you can remember through this also that chemiluminescence is the process through which the light is emitted as a product in the product of the reaction with the uh, when the chemical entities are reacting and they are emitting the light and in turn the fluorescence in comparison the fluorescence assay or the word fluorescence here the reaction basically the oxidized product which we get we have to irradiate it with certain wavelength of light so that it can absorb that radiation it can go from ground state to the excited state and further while coming to the ground state they can emit those radiations in the form of light blue green light or any fluorescent light so this is the basic difference between chemiluminescence and fluorescence again repeating chemiluminescence reaction or chemiluminescence is the process through which light is emitted as a result of chemical reaction while fluorescence is the when the light is uh, when the product of the reaction is irradiated with certain wavelength of light and it absorbs that light and it emits a longer wavelength in return. So it has become visible through fluorescence. So basically the chemiluminescent assay, the uh, chemical reagent which is used is luminol while in fluorescence, fluorescein reagent is used. So hope you have understood the two uh, terms, chemiluminescence and fluorescence. Let's understand bit detail about the for the methods that are used so the chemical reagents the most commonly used chemical reagent which can be used for locating blood stains at the scene of crime is luminol so basically most commonly used uh, chemical reagent is luminol and you have to remember its chemical name so the chemical name name of luminol is 3 amino thalhydroside this is asked they never ask you direct questions so uh, they'll be giving you its chemical name and you have to uh, get the answer through it. So you have to remember that luminol's uh, chemical name is 3 amino thalhydrazine. Other reagents such as phenolphthalene, leukomalachite green and tetramethylbenzidine. They are not often used as chemical enhancement reagents, but rather as presumptive test for blood. I've told you this in the previous slide. So uh, this kind of uh, chemiluminescence can be visible when we do the luminol test. You'll understand it in a much better way in the next slides. So chemiluminescence reaction. As we all know, luminol is usually used as a chemiluminescent reagent and basically oxidation, it is based on oxidation reaction. So the basic principle of this reaction is oxidation. Like every other preliminary examination of blood, they all depend on oxidation reactions where the substrate here in this case is luminol. 
it is oxidized to a chemiluminescent product in the presence of an oxidizing agent which is hydrogen peroxide and if blood is present is in the suspected stain then its heme group it will act as a catalyst which will uh, alter this reaction and so the luminol will be oxidized to 3 amino phthalate further uh, nitrogen water is also released and this this light can be it is visible in the form of light luminescence chemiluminescence detecting blood you can see here in this picture it is depicted very clearly detecting blood stains on a floor of luminol with luminol a blue chemiluminescence indicates the presence of blood traces now you can see here that usually luminol test is carried out in dark conditions because this light will only be visible in the dark environment and not in light environment so this is the basic and this is very basic that these tests are usually carried out in dark conditions so let's move further second essay is the fluorescence essay now when oxidized and catalyzed by heme you as we all know fluorescence essays fluorescein reagent is used chemical reagent it demonstrates fluorescent properties usually fluorescein sprayed stains they are exposed to light now what happens here is we are spraying the suspected area where blood stain patterns could be found we are spraying that area with the fluorescein reagent now if there is any uh, blood traces present its heme group will then oxidize it further and this oxidized product we have to irradiate it in the range of 425 to 485 nanometer we have to uh, put this wavelength of light on that area through alternate light sources devices and then if there if the reaction will be positive fluorescence is emitted as an bluish green fluorescent light you can see here bluish green light is emitted and this test is also carried out in dark conditions so this is of on black cotton fabric where fluorescein reagent is used and fluorescence is being emitted so hope you have understood this reaction also let's move further to the second part which is the documentation part now we have chemically and enhanced our uh, stains chemical blood stains now we have to record it or document it documentation is usually done very basically the documentation that procedures that are utilized for normal crime scene analysis they are also used for blood stain evidence also so we document the blood stains usually through photography note taking and sketching photography can be uh, done with digital photography can also be done and video video recording can also be done various sketching procedures and complete note making uh, where the suspected stains have found a uh, complete positions where they are found they are also very recorded and they are very useful during investigation purposes so this is how it is recorded very important point here is in photography like every crime scene we photograph the crime scene in three uh, ways like we take the overall photography then the mid range and the close up range similarly for blood stains also firstly the overall uh, room or the overall image of the crime scene is taken where the blood stain evidences are found then the close up shots of the same blood stains are taken not the close up mid range so that they can uh, be related to their uh, very uh, close environment and further the close up photographs which clearly depict the shape as well as the size of the photograph photographs so you have to remember that during close up photography you have to use a scale not only in close up photography you can use scaling in every kind of photographs overall or mid range but in close up shots it is very important because through it we can get the exact size of that particular stain so this is very important so this was all about this video hope you have understood about the chemical enhancement as well as the documentation of blood stain evidences if you have any kind of doubt you can ask in the comment section below so in the next video we'll be looking at about the analysis of spatter stains how the usual investigation and further proceedings are done after the recording and documentation of the blood stain pattern evidences and how and how we can get leads through it how is the actual reconstruction of crime scene is done we'll be looking at the next video
so you can uh, now you can join our facebook and instagram handles you can also join our telegram channel and you can visit our website savvyforensic.com so i hope that you all like this video please if you have if you have liked it please give a thumbs up also you can share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel thank you very much for joining